But I, yeah. I would like to North Carolina to become almost a mecca again uh, for pro wrestling, similar to um, the territory days. And this could be a territory people want to come and see and, and uh, enjoy. And Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. Bonjour, you're watching Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. I'm TK Trinidad, and today we have an amazing show, and of course, nothing but amazing guests. He is the intergalactic soul, the honorable brother, the revolutionary, and the owner of Ashe Wrestling. Please welcome Darius Lockhart. Lockhart, how are you doing? Doing good, thank you. Thank you for that intro. I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm good. So I have a question. Um, you are, you know, have amazing promotion, and you know, even though it's a promotion, it's a business. It's putting it together, all that stuff. So when you're kind of in the thick of it, what music do you listen to? Mm, um, I'm listening to anything that I can use for promotional material. <laughs> listen to anything that's for that. Um, I'm listening to. Uh, earlier this morning, I was listening to Sampha, which puts me in a better peace of mind. Um, mm -hmm. That was really good, and I probably should tap more into that energy. But I'm, I'm all over the place usually. I'm just a, or whatever you know the flows with me. I've been listening to a lot of Jersey Club mixes. <laughs> I've been listening yeah. um, a little bit of a little bit of house, a little bit of um, um, more traditional, just different things, just all across the board. Sorry to give you such a vague answer. No, no, it's, I mean, I definitely, I listen to different, it just depends on the day, the month, um, mm -hmm. you know, I can go from, you know, old school Caribbean gospel music to like rock to like, you know, hip hop that really shouldn't be listened to. Like it's, it just depends on the day. So I definitely, I definitely get it for sure. Um, so Ashe, it's a Yoruba phrase um, yes. and it's really, it's one of those things. Um, so my my shout out to my dad. He was really big into um, the culture. He gave me all uh, Yoruba names. So mm -hmm. I really connected with the name in itself. Um, with that being said, do you do you feel like people are getting what Ashe is supposed to represent? Um, I think some some people are. Mm -hmm. um, because it's so new, a lot of people are have their own projections, have their own expectations. So that comes first, always. You know, what they're imagining in their head is always going to be what comes to the, the forefront of their vision. Versus, mm -hmm. but we saw people saying, you know, calling it ASE. You know, so people they'll say ACE. Uh, so you know, not, not everyone's getting it yet. But um, you know, in due time, and you know, and and that's coming from someone who doesn't necessarily have a Yoruba background. I was raised mm -hmm. African. Christian. That's how I was brought up in, in you know, traditional church. But um, me understanding, you know, doing studies about connection to my people and everything like that, and looking at the power of a word like that, regardless of, you know, your background, just looking at that word and what it means and what it can bring, the energy it can bring over to your life. Mm -hmm. I want to um, kind of tap back into that energy. So hopefully people are, are you know, I would say hopefully people understand what they're what it, what it all stands for. But overall, um, I understand that I'm kind of in the business of putting medicine into candy. So even mm -hmm. if they don't realize what they're saying, they're still speaking something positive over their lives every time they talk about Ashe. So right. I, I'm in that. Um, and hopefully it, it doesn't step on any toes of people who are from that background of ilk. Uh, that's never their you know intention. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, I definitely I definitely agree with it, it was. Um the power in words and the power in names and the power of all of that really, um, really speak to that. Um, and, you know, it's just, you either, you either kind of learn it or you never do. And, you know, there's various versions in the middle. So um, I definitely, I definitely totally uh, get that. Now kind of going off your first show, mm. you know, putting it together, um, you know, you obviously come from a wrestling background, but it's always different when you step into a different kind of title. What were, what are the things that you learned from the first show that this show around, it's like, it's either it's coming easier or you're like, I'm not going to do that again. Or what are the lessons that you learned? Um, to breathe, <laughs> to um, think of everything, to ask, you know, every person, every position, what everything they need before we get to the arena uh instead of you know realizing the day of oh you do need that board that's across town in a warehouse <laughs> that, that we have to hurry up and get before fans come in you do have to you know um 
you got to get these microphones in this router set. It's, it's just all a matter of all the nooks and crannies of trying to understand, trying to remember what everyone else needs to do their job. So this pulls off. That's the thing. But like I said, remembering to breathe and being present as well, just because uh, I'm a person who gets flustered when uh, more than one person's calling my name at a time. And that is a job where everyone's calling your name at the same time. Mm-hmm. Cause everyone know what they're doing, especially for the first show. So that is, um, uh, it's just kind of learning. It's going to be a slow process, especially with me stepping into the performer and the and the runner at this next show. Um, trying to understand balance, learning balance is something I'm still trying to work through. Mm-hmm. But um, hopefully, you know, um, I learned a little bit last time to just stay calm and breathe. <laughs> that part. Um, so we have the next show that's coming up uh, mm-hmm. next Saturday. Um, so like a black, black history month celebration, um, obviously the last show was amazing. Just the lineup was amazing. Um, this one, you're kind of kicking off with a meet and greet with Ron Simmons and Teddy Long. Like, how did that, how did that come about? Um, it was just an idea I had. (laughs) It was just, um, you know, how can we, you know, um, I wanted to do, you know, a black history show, um, but also, I think the entire company is about, you know, blending that future and past. Mm-hmm. In order to honor history, you kind of have to have the past in the building. But I always wanted to do, I always want there to be a hand up in some shape, form, or fashion, or someone to learn from on every show. Someone mm-hmm. anyone, um, there, there was, you know, uh, a WWE, former WWE referee, Derek Moore, um, joined us last time, and he was able to help, you know, three independent, I mean, two independent referees learning under him. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, Dilo there as you know and, and Chris and they're learning from each other coming from two different commentary worlds it, it's all about being around someone who can say hey here's the help you need here's what I'm thinking you're missing and everyone can help each other out so having Ron and Teddy there was just the way I wanted to say how can we amplify the show center the past you know like you know a spotlight the past whatever honor the past have it present so it it, it has something to connect to it can connect back mm-hmm. down to it. and also bridge that gap um, especially with what the uh, independent scene is doing now, I feel like independents aren't, and maybe it's because of the age out thing and technology and, and the internet, independence is internet based information. Mm-hmm. Moves. But I think we're a little bit more disconnected from our legends than we used to be. You see Ring of mm-hmm. Honor stuff. There were, you know, Ricky Steamboat and, and, and you know, uh, they were coming down to work with people at Ring of Honor. Raven was coming down to work with people at Ring of Honor. And you don't really see that too much anymore outside of like, you know, bigger leagues or old things. So I'm just thinking uh, us, the people, we should just be trying to connect to that route. Remember why pro wrestling is pro wrestling and not just. So I feel like having that presence in was smart. So I just called a bunch of people who I knew and um, also running into Ron and Teddy at WrestleCade, me having to lock them down instead of going through a third party. I was just like, hey, Ron, y'all know me. We've talked before. We met years ago. And, um, you know, they, they briefly remember me, but then we start working and building the relationship up through phone calls and text. And um, hopefully they come and enjoy themselves and everyone can enjoy their presence as well. How does your mind work balancing all this stuff? Because it seems like you have um, a vision for the future, like you you have, and which every business should have as far as like, this is what I want it to look like. But it also like you're kind of grounded here because there's a show coming up and it's like, how do you balance it all? And then you're also wrestling. So how do you keep it all together? Like, how do you, what do you have like notebooks everywhere? Or is there a big, like, you know, wall with names and everything? Uh, no, it's my phone and a lot of note notepads, a lot of notes. <laughs> I use a lot of notes. The notes have my phone is probably one of my best friends. Um, I, I have so many ideas that I've just kind of logged in through since like, you know, since at least 2019 and, and things mm-hmm. I've just, you know, um, I've did as I've seen work and, and because I, I took time and, and let this bake and let this idea kind of soak and bake, I was able to see things that I go, Oh, okay. So that won't work. Oh, okay. Uh, this, that I like that idea. And I had a similar one, but I think it needs tweaking. So you're right. But I'm glad you did it before I, <laughs> I had to learn. Mm-hmm. It. Let's just, you know, there's a lot of that. Um, my brain works honestly it's it's a it's a day-to-day process i really don't know how um it's it's working right now i struggle all the time because I, i'm such a um because it's such a a, a newborn baby um mm-hmm. i'm I tell everyone move i i know how to put his booties on move i know how my baby likes his diaper change mm-hmm. it's, it's a lot of um me having to learn how to let go of control but until then it, it it's me wearing every hat i can until uh until i just can't wear it i just tell yeah. someone hey i'll um, yeah, 
but but usually it's day to day me handle me me looking at a list of everything I need to do until between now and the show whenever however now is and going mm -hmm. what can I knock off today and that's that's how I operate what can I knock off today all right let's do it um, this needs to get done okay hurry up you know what I mean so. Mm -hmm. How do you put the matches together? Like, I mean, there's so much. Mm. Um, and I mean, uh, for me, I'm always looking at, at the women's talent. And mm. over the last, I don't know, maybe, man, I can't believe it's like 2024. Um, mm. It's like a little bit before the pandemic and then definitely coming out of the pandemic, it was like this just boom of women's wrestlers. Mm. Um, just a, cr and it's a great thing. Mm -hmm. And so how do you, like, I, I saw a previous interview where you're like, you said that, you know, there's, there's some people that you're looking at for, you know, future shows, but like, how do you kind of lock it in and say this, these two people would be a great match? Um, I think at what's the story I want to tell is the first and foremost. I look at, I look at a talent that I see a lot of potential in and I go, okay, I get it, you know? And if I don't get it, I look at it and go, okay, well, what, what am I missing? And, mm -hmm. and, all it usually is me just looking at what they are trying to amplify as a performer, what they seem to prioritize in terms of what they want people to know about them, and me mm -hmm. going, well, how can we tell a story that amplifies that element of you, that makes that shine, so where people who, if you were at another wrestling company, they would go, oh, we don't get it, so do what we want you to do. How can mm -hmm. I get it and then make other people get it to where, like, you know, they can just watch it go, oh, you're okay, you know what I mean? So I, I like to put people in positions to win. Uh, and win the way they kind of want to. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've been a person who has been, you know, put in a box where people didn't understand what the revolution is supposed to be, or they thought you know, they conceptualized me at, at a base level, and then they kind of threw me to the side or whatever. So I know how that feels. So mm -hmm. it, it's working to be like, okay, I need to, I, I want to see my performer. I have to see them, and and and, and see them with a lens of respect, and honestly, um, try to help them curate whatever they're trying to curate that's my goal is to help them be the be the version of themselves that they're aspiring or they see in their head to get that out um in, in a marketable fashion so mm -hmm. i there and then i go okay well what match shirt what story amplifies that what matches serve that story what what is the trail what do we get you to what, what do i need who do i need to put in front of you um to get that point across and hopefully um things kind of fall into place from there um, you know, there's been, uh, um, you won't believe, we're only on show two, there's been a, an immense amount of um, cancellations and switch arounds. But it's, it's, uh, but everyone here is someone I've always wanted to work with anyway. So it's never mm -hmm. like, oh, you'll do just a, like a, okay, well, maybe you were here faster than I thought you were here, but let's put you here and then we'll get you where I was going to put you anyway. So it, it's all like a, a complex web that I, I kind of, I know where everything is kind of like going, but I have to. Mm -hmm. uh, put people in position just to win. That's all. Nah, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, as far as Ashe, were there missing pieces in the pro wrestling industry um, that you hope to fill with Ashe Wrestling? Um, storytelling and remembering, you know, that um, letting the pops be with the people, not with the bumps. Uh, mm. and what I, is, you know, if, if we're all running around and dropping on our necks, then you know, you're just going to pay for it to see us do it next time because now that's the brand and then now that's what you know. And and if you're, you know, microwaving everything and just giving you dream matches, well, then you're not really dreaming of them. We didn't give you time to dream. You just, it was really a thought. They're really thought matches. Like, oh, that'd be cool. And then let's do it. And it's like, all right, well, you ain't really been, you don't even want it. <laughs> like, like I can't, you can't dream about it if you don't want it. And it's like, sometimes it's a cool, nice surprise. Like, well, oh, that would be a good match. I didn't even think I would, I would want that. That's cool. But it has to be beyond the match because we have to have a desire that's being personality that has to be um uh an effort made by all like you know all people all parties um for people to want to see the outcome of, because the outcome is just as important as you know however what happens between like 20 minutes of action that's cool but i want mm -hmm. people to care who wins and who loses at the end of the day because that's what we're ultimately competing for we're all competitors we should be yeah. wearing losses and we are so um here at ashe we really want to focus on making people care about the people that you're watching, um, not just the moves and gifts that they're making. Yeah, this, I mean, I'm so I'm so invested in, in, in great storytelling and you definitely were able to do that in um, the last show, um, which is the last show you had the main event, which was a women's match. Um, 
And even this this show, you have an amazing lineup of women as well. So how important was it for you to feature African-American women in Ashe? Um, it, it's, it's very important. I think it's uh, essential to um, have a success with the audience that I want to serve, if, if, that, if that makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. I think that um, it's exciting, like you said, this boom of wrestling, but to see so many uh, different types of Black women and be able to showcase that um, not through, you know, just verb and in, in, in Twitter threads that we're not a monolith or whatever, that, that that's mm -hmm. a, a regular used term terminology, but just to showing that, like really displaying, mm -hmm. hey, this is what, you know, Jamaica looks like. This is what a, a mean girl looks like. This is what two best friends look like. This is what, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I think um, having, getting to paint in all those colors um, really does, I would like to think that I, I'm, I'm hopefully playing a part in letting black women be seen in a lot more different lights and, and letting black women be seen in, in every light that they want to be seen in rather than being set to some expectation that we all unfairly place on black women throughout history. Um, I just, I just kind of, like I said, I want people to be the, the, the selves that they see in their heads. So if mm -hmm. I can help a number of black women do that at the same time, I mean, my, my God, like, let, let's do it. Like, why not? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Yeah, because you see some promotions and and I mean, obviously, I've never put on a wrestling promotion, but I understand the business side of things. You know, you only can do as much as you can and what's available to you. So you see some promotions and they just have like one women's event, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just like the your your last one was just it was just amazing. Like the aesthetic and everything um, was just amazing. Okay, it just drew me in, and for some reason. Um, uh, I don't know. I, I forgot his name. The revolution. Uh, the revolution will not be televised. Do you know that? Are oh, you talking about? You, <laughs> I'm being. I'm being funny. No. Uh, you're talking about um, Gil Scott Heron. Yes. For some reason, I'm hearing like when like I'm watching your stuff and like I've seen your interviews. Like that's what I'm hearing in like in the in my in my subconscious. And that's like an amazing thing because it's just the the intent because it's like. One, you could be like, okay, well, I want to throw a promotion together and I want it to be with people that, you know, I'm comfortable with, I want people to see, and you just throw it out there. But the intent with, you know, how you pick the matches and stuff like that, and then even with this Black History one and how it rolled out, like, that's a whole nother job in itself. So I want to just say, I really appreciate that, just seeing that, because sometimes people just like, here, here y'all go, like, <laughs> this is, here's another indie show for you. It's like, uh -huh. no, I want to see all the nuances. Yeah. So I appreciate that. I, I think I think wrestling's at its best when everyone has something to do. And um I think it will, I will be um doing a disservice to myself if I didn't give these women something worth something to do. You know what I mean? You're not just showing up to bump for me. You're not just, you know, a used body. There's a, there's a lot of people who've contacted me about being a part of this brand and I'm very very thankful that there's so much interest in it. Um but I tell people all the time like let's just it's a matter of timing and a matter of making a sense because there there's, there's people that I want to use, but if I'm bringing you in here, it's not just, you're not just a body. I'm not about to throw you in a scramble match and we'll see you in uh, two years. I really want to come through this door with something to do and something to say, and maybe a place to go. Um, and you may not go there right away in the first match. Everyone has time. I, I, I bake things. I don't like a way, but mm -hmm. I, I read you in with some intentionality and you're here for a reason. Um, and that, and that goes to every woman or man that I book. Nice. Now, do you see, I know it's still kind of new, but do you see Ashe potentially moving outside of Charlotte in the near future? Um, not the near future. Um, that's just not my intentionality. I'm, I'm just kind of learning how to, not my intentions, I should say. Uh, I'm just kind of learning how to do this, really. Um, I mean, I've, I've studied a long time, obviously. You know, um, I think the first show um, shows that I kind of worked through preparation and making sure I was the right people and studying a lot of other promoters for quite some time. But that was legit my first show I've ever done. So mm -hmm. I need um, I need to be able to, to, I want to master the ability to put on a show and be relaxed throughout the element and, and be good at it in a well-oiled machine before I start taking on the road. Because when mm -hmm. you start taking on the road, then you have to deal with um, other buildings and then, you know, state guidelines that you're not familiar with. And then I, I don't know what the best book building is to book because I'm not familiar with the area. And now I have to book all committee. And it's like, it's a lot of different things. Mm. Um, and, and that's, you know, a, a part of that is I could hire, you know, people to find things for me, but at the same time that that's, um, 
that's we're trying to work with a budget you know it's all out of pocket and all out of love so we're just trying to make it make sense so me coming to another state it's a cool idea i'm glad people are excited about it but number one we have to have um a guaranteed audience there uh, mm -hmm. i want to make that that we have people that want to come out and see us in the area and i also want to make sure that um it, it's it's less of a burden and more kind of an effortless okay we know what we're doing we just show up we and then we go home um so that's a little ways down the road especially when you're transporting things like rings and all the materials and items it, it just becomes costly so you want to make sure you're, you're growing at a decent rate but i, yeah. I would like to north carolina to become almost a mecca again uh, for pro wrestling similar to um the territory days and this could be a territory people want to come and see and, and uh, enjoy and they know what you know what they're getting out of charlotte I like it. I like it. Um, so you have a great re uh, relationship with Billy Dixon for um, and for the culture. He's also featured in Ashe. How important is it for Black promotion promoters and promotions to work together? I think it's 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 very essential. Um, uh, there, you know, there's always um, the aspect sometimes amongst entertainment businesses or any really any kind of businesses that Black people have to you know kind of find their way into. Of uh, there can only be one. And um, I, I don't like really competing with people that I'm supposed to, I could be building with, you know what I mean? Um, so I think working hand in hand is, is, is damn near essential, especially if we want to tell stories that service everyone, tell stories that kind of can weave in and out that are fun, that are, um, that are big scale, like independence used to be, you know, mm -hmm. there's Chris Hero and CM Punk would work in IWA. Then they would go on to Ring of Honor. Then they would go on to CCW. Then they would go. They were They would take the match all over the country, and that was a feud you could invest in because you knew mm -hmm. if you followed it, you would be getting story beats and a payoff eventually. And I think that is um, that's something that him and I both have a vision for to bring back to professional wrestling, um, especially when you look at you know the past fifteen years of independent pro wrestling. Um, I'm not shitting on anyone because there's been some amazing wrestling, but the the stories that people that stick to people's meat, like you know, see people's ribs, you know, like the, the Punk and Joe, um, the the Generico and Steens, they're few and they're few and far fewer and farther between um, when you look into the 2010s and on or post, you know, 2014, I should say. Um, there's like maybe five after that, you know, uh, Osprey mm -hmm. and Oku out of England and you know a couple other places, but um, you want to do um long format storytelling you want to make everyone matter you want to make a prize like the pan african title matter that to all of us then you have to mm -hmm. be uni a unified front um i met ron simmons years ago for the first time and that's what he told me he said y'all have to stick together <laughs> and i've always taken that to heart yeah i mean that that's a whole uh after interview conversation with itself but yeah i definitely agree with that um now let's talk about the promotion coming up next week okay so, so the lineup we got um we have yaya versus sunny kiss we have uh mia friday versus jada stone like you mentioned that's gonna be awesome very uh probably high flying match those girls can move mm -hmm. and i don't know some of the things they could do um you know you have a uh, movie mike uh, the filmmaker movie mike let me forget versus fast as hell in maxwell uh two guys who are north carolina um they, they've been working on the Years. They've made some travels, but they were just ready to break out, and they've been working for a very long time. And uh, Ian's mm -hmm. an athlete, and Mike is one an entertainer, one of one. So I can't wait for people to see what those two have in store. Um, then you have the um, Pan African World Champion match, um, the, the Pan African Diaspora match. You have Shug D versus Caprice Coleman. Uh, Caprice Coleman coming, um, you know, as as Shug would put it, stepping out of the booth, the commentary table. But yeah. you know, Caprice. If he stays ready, so he doesn't have to get ready. He's he's the living embodiment of that. I've never met a man who personifies that more. Um, so, you know, he's just taking an opportunity um, that was incited by a personal issue that I, I, I don't have anything to do with. Those guys just kind of go, start going off on each other. And, uh, <laughs> and But, you know, I think it, the, the underlying issue is the respect that they have for each other. Because I think there's some disappointment that's under that's behind the respect, you know what I mean, and that's why and th that's there. So we have him coming out and challenging for his maybe first nationally or globally recognized world title, and this could be a big okay. Chris Coleman, um, as well as myself. I'm returning to the ring against the All Father Darius Carter. Um, it, I, I would have loved to um, have gone hold for hold with Darius Carter. I think we are two of the best technical wrestlers uh, in the world, but. Um, it's a personal issue. So now I just kind of got to kick his ass. So, uh, he, he, you know, he, he put his hands on a mentor of mine, a school teacher 
who couldn't go to work for the next week after he did it. And um, and now it just it, when you know also remember the moment challenging me and tried to try my manhood and say I went soft by um, me challenging my best friend, one of my best friends in the wrestling industry um, mm-hmm. that I, they have an eternal beef with. I I know I know it very well. Um, he made that about him, a moment about him, and I didn't like that. So um, you, he kind of was he's a habitual line stepper, <laughs> and so now it's kind of to it's time to smack his mask you know, back over that line, you know what I mean, to where he knows where he's at. Uh, other than that, uh, like you said, the King Bees are in action. Um, and the King Bees are, um, they, they're, they've been asking me, they're looking for, you know, competition. And uh, I, I don't want to spoil any surprises, but the, but I'm hoping, you know, we have some good competitors for them. Um, and if not, um, we'll find them by the time. Jason Navarro is also scheduled to be in action. Ray mm-hmm. Chanel, uh, sorry, Rache Chanel is also um, going to be in action. Uh, Brooke Valentine will be in the building. Here's an announcement that I have not announced. I was going to put the flyer out uh, too, uh, soon, but Faye Jackson will also once again be in the building. She'll be joining us. So there's a lot that could happen, um, a, a lot of uh, ingredients there. And I just kind of want to keep some things uh, as a surprise for the fans, um, but we'll, we'll, we're going to have a lot of fun with, with those ingredients, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. I mean, I like the storytelling of it all. Um, you know, even when you're telling – with you and, and Darius, like I saw the last the last show, and I was like, I feel like something's gonna happen. Like you just can't. Like if you didn't, if you decide not to do anything and been like, well, what happens? Like are they friends now? Like what's going on? Because sometimes, and you 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 can only expect so much because everybody's human, right? But sometimes you know you have this future book in your head, and then people don't you know do it because of whatever reason, injuries or whatever. So I really appreciate you know. That 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 thread line. It's kind of like almost at the end of a Marvel movie where you wait for the credits and you see this and you're like, okay, well, I need to see what happens next in the next movie. So that's really good. I, I will I will say this. You know, I, I I like to kind of blend my realities a little bit. But if we're speaking on th- the points of thread points, um, there is every single match you saw at Ashe One has a thread point, and you'll see it, and you'll see it every single one. And that one person um, is is nothing happened for accident. I'll say that much. And uh, we'll continue to see those grow and come into some really awesome moments that some people might, maybe they see coming and hopefully a lot of people won't. Um, okay. We're going to have fun over the next couple months and, and uh, you, hopefully you guys really enjoy it. Okay, last two questions. So you're getting into the ring. You're also, I mean, obviously putting this together. So when do you have time? When do you have time to train? Barely. Uh, uh, Monday through Wednesdays at night, I from around um, a little bit after 6 p.m. because I'm always showing up late, and always working <laughs> for Ashe and doing so many things. But I, I drive as soon as I can. I, I drive up to Matthews and get a little bit of ring time in. Um, so I, you know, I, that can range from about you know 6:30 to 8:30. I'm usually the last one to leave. I'm always you know working with some new trainees and trying to get them to run and run some cardio with me because it's really all about cardio. Um, mm-hmm. Getting the ring. Um, it, it, it's like riding a bike a little bit for me. I started going hold for hold and I just kind of felt back at home, um, you know, r- running the ropes and, and doing my things and, and, and my usual drills. But uh, the cardio, the wind is the hard part. So I'm going Monday Wednesdays and, and doing five by five drills and, and, and blowing myself up. Um, those nights. And, and when I come home, either I crash out or I'm up working on Ashe again. So oh. it's a cycle. Um, but Monday through Wednesdays are my sweet days. And I try to, I, I try to do some, um, so stretch therapy during the days, uh, during the daytime when I can, little pockets a couple of times a week. Um, I'll do, I work with my personal trainer on Fridays. So that's fun. Um, we kind of work on explosiveness and mobilities, but um, that isn't always a regular thing every Friday too. It's every now and then when I can squeeze it in. Um, but, you know, the, the gym has sadly, traditionally, I've been a big gym guy. I, I got up, well, not traditionally, that's a lot. <laughs> this this past year, I've been mm-hmm. implementing and, um, mm-hmm. I've kind of got back into it. Um, over the summer, I fell back in love with the gym. I got up to maybe two, 265 pounds, um, and I was ready to shred it off. And as soon as that Ashe uh, headline went out and my job got turned on, uh, the gym time decreased, like, palm was mm-hmm. body. You know what I mean? Uh, I've just been running. So I find time when I can make time, but it, it, I can't act like it's not hard. And if anyone, yeah. so, you know, well, Darius is doing it so I can do it. Um, Darius is trying. <laughs> and, and 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 all we can do is try. So please, yeah. uh, people are kind to themselves and, and realize that and, and breathe. And because um, mm-hmm. I'm, yeah. yeah, 
Yeah, I find it too, like, you know, um, same, same thing where I, you know, I had a lot of gym time and now I'm super busy. And then I, what the hardest part is, you know, what the two, the two step process, getting to the gym, you get there. So it's a check mark, but then mm -hmm. trying to shut off like mm -hmm. all the things that you need to do and actually like do the workout, like, you know, like just that's the that's that's now becoming like the hard part for me where it's just like okay we're we're getting to the gym now but like just the, the complete shut off like the the good old days where you could just go to the gym and work out for hours and just like you know it's just a good day you walking out feeling happy versus you working out and you're like man i forgot to do this i need to do this and like yeah. should i leave early like it's all those those it, things so it's accessibility you have you have a, an, an eye in your pocket at all times mm -hmm. iphone literally like <laughs> everyone can talk to you in a moment. Like I can mm -hmm. Instagram and say, Hey, right now. And I don't have to know you. So, you know, the, the um, immediately, like the immediate uh, accessibility, it has kind of dwarfed our sense of isolation, of mm -hmm. focus, of um, concentration that moment, because there's always something trying to buy for our attention, whether it's right. something, something or someone needing your attention because they can access you at any point. So mm -hmm. the, yeah, Gym is now harder as, as, as well as so many other things in life. But um, yeah, I try to go that do not disturb mode and stick to the notes app. What, what, what's on it in my music? That's the best hope I can give. You know? But last question. You wear a lot of black. And I don't know if this is a, I don't know if this is a storyline, but um, like, is your closet just a bunch of black shirts? Like, what, what's the like, do you just keep it simple? What's what's the what's what's the story behind it? No, uh, I, I wear a lot of flat clothes outside of this, a lot of colorful things. I've been wearing a lot of pink um, and mauve for the last year, uh, to be honest with you. Um, but uh, the black is just so, um, it, it, it's, it's, it's brand awareness, it's brand subconsciousness. I'm trying to implement something. I, I wear this hat all the time, if you notice, too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think every good wrestler should be someone you can draw, imitate, or dress up as for Halloween. Um, one, if you can hit one of the three, great. If you can hit two, you're doing good. If you hit all three, amazing. And I try to hit all three to where, you know, if, if a kid wants to draw me, all he has to do is draw my little hat, some mm -hmm. shade, a little mustache or beard, whatever he wants to do. And now he has a revolutionary. Um, if you want to just be, dress up to, as me to somewhere, you have to do is put on this hat, find a hat, wear the shades, and then now you're me. Um, mm -hmm. So it's kind of a branding thing uh, that, that I do, you know, uh, trying to be the best wrestler I can be, but also so you know, you know, what, what I'm kind of about. Um, but it's funny that you say that because I've been telling myself um, uh, and Billy, too, that I'm, I'm going to start allowing a little bit more of myself, my day to day kind of lead through uh, the revolutionary. Um, I feel like beforehand, there was such a strong sense of responsibility of, you know, I'm 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 playing with something very sensitive here, and I don't want to say play with it, but I, I'm I'm trying to amplify a very sensitive part of myself, um, mm -hmm. with pride and, and self love, really, at the end of the day. Um, and when you're playing with that, that can represent that it can represent so much to so many people. You don't want to be, um, you don't want to be reckless with it. Mm -hmm. But so you know, so there were times that you know maybe I didn't smile as much because like I, one thing they love telling us to smile. <laughs> I, I I didn't want to you know dance because they love when we dance and when you dance mm -hmm. once they and and but you know there are things that uh, I'm a human too and I like to do that and I think that there is a, um, strength in black humanity just as much as there's strength in you know um, in, in black respectability or black you know performance or anything like that so I think um, allowing a little bit more of myself a little more of the human kind of see through we have clothes you'll, you'll probably see more um, because I think it's time for y'all to understand the revolution is just a person too uh, I can't just be a concept so yeah, yeah you'll see me switch it up a little bit more is what I'm trying to say okay all right, all right. Uh, you know I'm not not I'm not saying this switch up. I was just saying like it's oh just, yeah no, it's no. almost kind of like a combination of Steve like Steve Jobs like look I'm 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 creating amazing things right now I really don't have time to to be giving you all this color, like, you know, I, I like it. So just... there is an element of that. Um, I, I don't, I, I'm, don't get meticulous with a fit until I really got to like, if I know who's there, like, okay, well, let me think about what I'm about to wear. But yeah. uh, day to day, me getting things done, I, there was like one week I wore like the same pair of sweats for like a week, dude. Like it was, it was right. really bad. I was going to the bank. <laughs> I was just going to, to, you know, this, the, 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 the warehouse with the lighting warehouse and all the, I was just going to the, when it comes to that, I throw whatever on. You might see me in a crazy fit. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm intentional. I'm intentional when I'm intentional. 
Yeah, I told I totally get it. Um, <laughs> so this is kind of like a, a little a little different question. Where we are as far as um, wrestling and black wrestlers across different promotions. If you were like, say, you know, everybody's seeing what you're doing, Ashe, and they're like, look, we're we're getting it wrong. We're we're missing something. If you were kind of almost like the <sighs> iHeart, for instance, has um, the guy who's in charge of all hip hop wrestling across the uh, all hip hop radio across the board across America is Doc Winter. So now, mm -hmm. if you were like the Doc Winter of black wrestling across all the major promotions. Is there anything in particular that you're like, man, this is this is what I would do. This is how I'd shift things around. See people. See people. That that's it. I just, and, and beyond the skin tone, you know what I mean. It, where mm -hmm. it's like, you, know, you, you um, you can use obviously. You want you want to use everything that's true, right? You want to use everything that people can see and people know to be true. To, to your to your you know aesthetic and everything, but at the same time, there's so much about us that is true. There's so much about us that we don't dive into. Mm -hmm. um, have to be just oh we're the new hood stable of the week. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't have to be that all the time. I think it's it's seeing people for who they could be as a concept beyond a um, a demographics cruncher. You have to see mm -hmm. it than that you um i remember there was a, a few tweets a couple years ago people were you know mad at certain company owners and things like that were making and and it always came down the, the the discourse to me always was a step behind when it came to to like race relations and professional wrestling because mm -hmm. the discourse, well you know y'all are in the room you're getting booked here we have this guy this guy this guy what's the issue and it's not necessarily the numbers it's the literature it's the it's, it's mm -hmm. the it's what are you saying with us while we're on screen? Um, I, I think we have to be, I guess I would ask people or have people be more intentional with what we're saying on screen when we when we have certain people do certain things because a picture's worth a thousand words and mm -hmm. a picture is just one frame of a show. And when you're filming a three hour wrestling show, how many frames and how many words are you saying to people? And mm -hmm. and what um, the way you use us is just as important with how many of us you use, uh, really more important, way more important than how many of us you use. So um, I, I would like to kind of change the concept and, and, and the perception of that battle. Um, you know, I, I think that would be the starting point at least. Okay. I mean, if we could create a job like that, that would be amazing. So let me put that I, in the U.S. It, it'd be cool, but you know, at the same time, um, you know, uh, we're always, you know, uh, that that's still in service and, and not owners, and not ownership. True. You know? Yeah. And I think that owning it is really how we're going to flip this thing on our head because, you know, everyone that employs, uh, uh, I'm sorry, what's the person's name? Oh, Doc, Doc, Doc Winter. Doc Winter. Every person mm -hmm. that, is, uh, the, that would be a pro wrestling Doc Winter um, would still not be looking like Doc Winter. That's why they're hiring Doc Winter because the person right. is Doc Winter and they need that vision. Rather than doing that vision for someone else and making them more money like we always do, why don't we mm -hmm. just kind of grab it ourselves, which is what I'm trying to yeah. do. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, but I do see the vision. I do see the vision. Yeah. I see what you're, you know. Yeah. But hopefully, we can just lead by example. Yeah, um, it's it's a combination of you know making our own table and also being at the at the table at the same time because yeah. it's kind of one of those things that oftentimes we get into um, the silo of okay, well, y'all not listening, so I'm just gonna do it over here. But then it's like the people who actually should be listening, they don't really listen because they don't even know it exists or all this stuff. So it's kind of that fine, the fine balance of, of, of both. So I definitely um, agree that it's, like I said, it's just, it was, a, it's amazing just to see what you're doing and then how you're rolling it out and the, the storylines and all this stuff. Um, it's, it's just, you know, it's very meticulous. So I appreciate that. And with that being said, how can people watch it, support, all the things because this ain't cheap. I'm, I'm not in your pocketbook, but I'm willing to bet this is not, <laughs> this is not, you know. Um, no, so you can support us um, by subscribing to our YouTube channel. That's that's one. Um, it's free. I promise you the subscription button is just a click. Uh, once you, we're almost, I think we're about maybe 60 away from a thousand followers and a thousand subscribers. And once we get to a thousand, we can start monetizing the viewership and that's going to help uh, absolve mm -hmm. 
a, a, a lot, hopefully, as more subscribers come in. So subscribing is, is the easiest way. In order to watch the show, well, first of all, if you want to be in the building, you buy a ticket at ashewrestling.com. Uh, there will be a tab at the top of the page that says tickets. It'll lead you right to Eventbrite, um, and you'll we'll be able to purchase whatever you need to purchase. Um, at the same time, if you are not watching, uh, if you're not if you're not being there in the building and you're watching at home, you can go to the same page starting tomorrow, actually, Monday, February 19th. You can purchase a link to the live stream um, where Ashe will be, you know, Put out for the world so what you'll do is you'll go and um uh, uh, there'll be something in watch ashe the tab will say watch ashe you click it mm -hmm. buy the link it's only 15 bucks the show is only 15 bucks this time um you pay for it and you'll receive a you'll see a downloadable link icon download that thing click the link and it'll take you right to the show stream and that's all it is so you can watch online you can be in the building you can subscribe on youtube those are three great ways to help us out um and yeah and, and i think those are the quickest ways for anybody that that part and is are you going to be offering maybe like the next show where people can sponsor matches and stuff like that or so I, i've been wanting to do that since show one uh the thing is learning what we can offer and what we can promise people um because mm -hmm. i on on what we're you know doing but sponsorships will be available very 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 soon um i kind of false advertised back in the first one just because i didn't realize how intricate our um you know uh, professional that needs to be handled um it can't just be a handshake it, it mm -hmm. can't just Take a PayPal and we'll talk, we'll say on the mic, I want to make sure people are getting what they want out of the sponsorship money. So yeah. uh, that that's going to be a process that are hopefully, that is hopefully up by the next show's announcement. Okay. All right. And any, I, I mean, I know we're, we're, we're crunching to this, this show, but do you have, is there thoughts as far as the next show? Are you looking like March? What you, is, like, is there, is there a, a date that's floating around in your head? We yeah, there, there's already a date set for the next show. Uh, I haven't announced it yet. Um, I could give it to you, but at the same time, uh, then then my uh, the expectations get a little bit hotter. And okay. if you don't, know, then 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 you're not. Hey, Darius. <laughs> <laughs> then you start getting phone calls before even this show goes out. Yeah, okay, I'm like, yeah, I have to finish this show, and, I, and they're trying to get on that show, and it's like, and also there's that, and and then people are just going, well, "Where are the match announcements? Where's where's that?" At? And I'm like, if y'all don't know when it's coming, I'll just give it to you, and I'll tell you when to show up. I'll, ha I'll tell you when I'm done. You know what I'm saying? I'll tell you when I'm done. So, uh, but it is coming um, very soon, and mm -hmm. uh, say it will be um, it will be after uh, WrestleMania weekend. Okay, okay. I had I had a feeling that was I I was kind of putting the the dots together. So I had a feeling that was gonna because it can't mm -hmm. be WrestleMania week, especially if you're not traveling. So because I was hoping yeah. that you would have something WrestleMania weekend, but I completely get it. And you know, I'm sure people are giving you all these suggestions. You're like, bro. This costs money. Like, are you are you yeah. are you helping move this equipment? <laughs> what, yes. you can't just give me a suggestion. I, I have a beautiful relationship with my videographer, but I still have to pay my videographer. And I remember we put up um, the twenty four seven documentaries with Caprice and Shug, and uh, they're only about eight to twelve minutes long a piece. And someone in the comments was like, "Great job." Wish it were like next time it needs to be 30. And I was like, Do you have 30 money? Like, do you have 30 minutes? Do you have 30 minutes attention span? No one even why I see how a lot of people watch things for mm -hmm. me. But everyone wants more, and that's a good thing. I'm not mad at that person. I am I'm, I'm excited that they're excited enough to ask for 30 minutes of our show. Mm -hmm. Um we're happy to get eight minutes of their time. So um I think that's just a very uh, funny thing, but a very real thing that I'm getting a lot of people telling me yeah. exactly how they want it. But growing pains, I can't be mad at the excitement. Yeah, I mean, at least they want it. So that's a good thing. That's um, good. But I'm going to let you get back to it because I'm sure there's a lot more that you need to do. You also have to get in the gym, all the all the things. So I appreciate you for your time. I appreciate you guys for watching. Definitely tap into all things Ashe um, throughout this week. Pay for the pay-per-view. Unfortunately, you know, I'm all the way in L.A. So, you know, that trip is a little, little, little my, not, might not work for me, but I'm going to definitely watch it. Um, so definitely uh, check that out. Uh, you guys can follow me on everything at TK Trandad. You can check out everything for Women's Wrestling Talk on all things everywhere at WW Talk Pod. Thank you guys so much for watching Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. Ciao, y'all. Thank y'all. Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet.